Hi, welcome to my channel DIY Enjoyment. A very important part of a design speaker is a qualified crossover. Pre-made crossovers are not suitable for every design. So, you should do it yourself. Would you like to design a high-quality crossover for your speaker? I will tell you how to do it. This process consists of 10 steps. One, preparing the necessary tools and software as follows. Tools, LCR meter, can be done without it. Multimeter, software, the TWIXCAD software, filter solution software, not mandatory, REW, and Akabak, for better evaluation. All software links are available in the description. Two, Choosing electrical power for speakers, based on the output power of your amplifier. 3. Preliminary checking of the frequency response and impedance curve of the selected speakers. 4. Importing the specifications of the speakers into the Akabak and Vituixcad software. 5. Determining the desired crossover frequencies based on the previous step. Six, selecting and calculating filters based on frequency response and impedance curve of drivers. Seven, choosing suitable inductors, capacitors, and resistors. Eight, checking the directivity matching of the drivers. Nine, purchasing the components. 10, implementing the circuits and connecting them to the speakers. After watching this series of videos, you can simply design a crossover. If you like the video so far, watch till the end to learn more. Let's start. A crossover has two important tasks. One protection of high and mid frequency drivers. When low frequencies are played, the voice coil of the speaker has maximum displacement. The lower this frequency is, the more the voice coil will move. This is not good for high and medium frequency drivers because it will damage their mechanical parts. The crossover can remove the low frequencies and the driver will be safe. Two, removing the noisy sounds and providing a flat frequency response. As you can see, there are three peaks in the blue chart. In the orange chart, the crossover has filtered these peaks. I will tell you later how the crossover provides a flat response. As I said in this video, our hearing range is between 20 and 20,000 Hz. But speakers that have a flat frequency response across the entire range are rare and expensive. If we can divide this range into three parts and consider one driver for each, it will be easier. The low frequency driver is called a woofer, and its response is roughly between 50 and 2000 Hz, although this range may vary by different manufacturers. Mid frequency driver is called the mid range, whose response is between 300 and 5000. The high frequency driver is called a tweeter and its response is usually between 2,000 and 20,000 Hz, but some tweeters can play up to 35 kHz. The frequency range of the subwoofer is between 20 and 200 Hz. You should know that this driver is a complement to an audio system and is a project on its own. The best way to detect the type of drivers is their frequency response and impedance. These responses are from a manufacturer which shows the difference between the drivers. As you can see there are some peaks in the impedance curves.
The higher the frequency at which the peak occurs, the less likely the driver is a woofer. You may say that this explanation is redundant, but when you have a speaker that you don't have the specifications for, the situation is different. Don't worry, you can get all its specifications with these tutorials, and you can compare its impedance response with these charts to determine your driver type. Suppose we choose a total power of 100 watts based on the second step. It is better that the maximum power of the speakers is more than the power of the amplifier. On the other hand, when the amplifier gives its maximum power, it creates more distortion. So you can use a 100 watt amplifier and limit its output volume, but it is not recommended unless you know how to do it. I'll select two drivers, a woofer and a tweeter. The resulting project will be a two-way speaker. According to the previous tutorials, the desired frequency response is a flat graph. If we choose the flat range of each driver so that they overlap each other and their sound pressure level is almost the same, the third step is done. There is an overlap here, and the SPL of the drivers is the same in their working range. Imagine a filter that only passes low frequencies. If it passes frequencies up to 2000, it will reduce the sound pressure level of 4000 Hz by at least 6, 8000 by 12, and 16000 by 24 dB. We can design a filter that reduces 4000 Hz by 12, 18, or 24 dB. A higher value is not recommended. These explanations will be true for a high-frequency driver, too. Of course, for that we need a filter that passes high frequencies and reduces the low frequencies. This summary gives a better view of choosing the drivers that include the peaks. Because the filters can remove them and you can analyze the selected drivers, of course, accurate results are obtained from the software. In the next video, we'll import the speaker specifications into Vituixcad software. If you like the video, support us with your likes and comments. Ask your questions. I'll answer as fast as I can.